we want to welcome you today. This is Volunteers Week, so we thank you for being here. We thank you for being a part of this ministry. That's what today is all about. And please welcome Clayton Watson. Let's do that first song. Are you ready for that fast one, the real fast one? Because I think y'all need to get excited about today. And you need to stand up and praise the Lord. Because guess what? We're going to have fun today, all right? Now you hear that? Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me and it was just in time. Now I'm going to praise his name. Each day is just the same. I'm going to praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Come on. Look what the Lord has done. Look. Look what the Lord has done. Look. He healed my body, he touched my mind, he saved me and it was just in time. Surprise! Each day is just the same. I'm gonna praise him, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done your body he touched your mind he saved you and it was just in time now i'm gonna praise his name each day is just the same i'm gonna praise him look what the lord has done one more time come on now look what the lord has done look what the lord has done he healed your body, he touched your mind, he saved you and it was just in time. Now I'm going to praise his name, each day is just the same. I'm going to praise him, look what the Lord has done. I'm going to praise him, look what the Lord has Done. Look what the Lord has done. Yes, hallelujah. Surprise. Please welcome my mom and dad, Jim and Lori Baker. <laughs> this, is, this is great. I, I just, they, they didn't have me scheduled to come out yet. <laughs> but I just had to come out because I had to hear Tammy Sue sing in person. And I just couldn't wait to see you guys face to face. I need to see you again. I need to see you. She introduces the show every day, but I don't yeah. really see her. Well, we don't see each other. <laughs> I'm over in the basement, and uh, someday I'll tell you the story. I'll take. I'm gonna sit down and take some time, but I won't do it today. But it's been quite a quite a road, and um, they've changed the name of my book, by the way. <laughs> oh God! Oh man! Just this week. We we we've worked hard to write this book, which will tell you about the year or so that we've just been through. And uh, the, the new title, Sue, <laughs> sing my title of the book. You can make it. You can make it. Guess what? This trial that you've been through, God showed you every day just what to do you not only can make it but you made it <laughs> you can make it guess what I don't care what's going wrong God didn't let it last that long and you're not in this thing alone 
You can make so come on sing it. You can make it. Yes. You can make it. Oh, this trial you're going through. God's going to show you just what to do. You can make it. You can make it. Make it, Mr. Jim Baker. Oh. Wow. So that's the title of the new book, You Can Make It. <laughs> I, I just want to say hello to you. I just wanted to be with you and to be back on stage here. We've just added 15 new babies to our Lori's house. Whoa. Whoa. Our, I can see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that looks Great. That's God that. works miracles here every single day. You know, God's timing is not our timing. We don't understand some things. But God always comes through. Now, did you hear what I just said? God always comes through. The fact that this ministry is here right now is a miracle, a true miracle of God. I don't say things like that lightly. It's a true miracle of God that we're here. And it's because of people like Marcella and little Lori. It's because of people like Pastor Joe, Mondo. It's because of you, our volunteers, it's because of our staff. And, and you have allowed God to work through you to keep this ministry going. There is no amount of things that my family will ever be able to give to you for standing with us, for believing in this ministry. There's just no way we could ever thank you. So today is a little bit of a thank you, a little bit, of just, just to say we love you, we appreciate you, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all the hard work that you do for this ministry. And we pray that God blesses you. Right. So Pastor Joe, would you come pray for us and pray for this food today and Give Pastor Joe a hand. We love him. This family worked so hard for this ministry. We love you. Will you pray over our food, please? Absolutely. Father, we love you and we thank you, Lord, for every volunteer here today. We thank you, Lord, for the nourishment of our bodies, and we ask, Lord, for a change in the things that we do, that we do it as unto you, and we will praise you in everything that we do, and we love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please welcome the one and only Big Clayton, Clayton Watson.
Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. You've developed a product that literally feeds your brain. Mm -hmm. What those different nerve cells have in common is that they're all nerve cells and they all follow the same rules of biochemistry and metabolism. So when you make nerve cells better and healthier, whatever processes they do improves. And so that's why we had cognitive and mood benefits. You're getting omega-3 that comes with it. Mm. You get two books, yes. electronic books, the Brain Trust Program, and, and then the Feed Your Brain, Lose Your Belly. And uh, you get the two books, yes. and you get the two supplements. supplements. This is shown to increase memory, focus, and concentration. It has 50 powerful brain-boosting nutrients in one daily supplement. Lucidol helps think more clearly, process information faster, reverse the effects of aging on your brain, Whoa. regulate your mood better, remember more quickly. That is just this product. This is amazing product. I want to make it really clear what you're getting for $75. Don I can't even believe that it's $75 donation, just $75 to receive the brain supplement offer, you're gonna receive one of the Lucidol supplements, one of the Omega-3, and a bonus, two of the eBooks. Those are electronic books where you'll be able to receive a link to download the books on your laptop, your computer, your cell phone, Kindle, whichever device you have. You'll receive two bonus of the books, Feed Your Brain, Lose Your Belly, and the Brain Trust Program book only for a donation of $75 to the ministry. And that also includes the shipping and handling. That is absolutely amazing. So we want you to call us right now. Don't wait. Call us 1-888-988-1588. Remember, you can still order on the website, jimbakershow.com as well. But get in line, get your hands on this amazing product that has been researched. But these are whole books. Yes, and what we're going to do, we, we think through everything. So we are going to make it very easy for you in your package when you receive this package with the omega-3 and the lucidol you're going to receive a small business type card that's going to have a direct link so all you do is you go to your search engine and you just type that in and it will take you directly to the electronic books and all you have to do is download those and you'll have the information right at your fingertips i want you to order right now yes toll free that's right What's the number? 1-888-988-1588 or go to the website, jimbakershow.com. You can write us at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. But I would pick up that phone or go to the website right now and get started on this as soon as possible. And you can do it? Yes. yes. On your credit card? That's right. You can place it on your credit card. And so what that means, I really want to encourage you, is I believe once you get this product and you start to see the benefits that you're going to receive, you're going to want to take this product and stay consistent with it. Right. And so you can do that by using credit card for a $75 donation to the ministry. Call us 1-888-988-1588. Remember, you can still order on the website, jimbakershow.com as well. This is the brain supplement offer. Someday, honey, when we get back to the studio, we'll tell, we'll tell all of our journey of behind the scenes, getting ready for the Jim Baker show yeah. um, all the time. <laughs> the Mondo, book's going to tell a lot because yeah. the, the book, Mondo we helps. worked hard on this book, by the way. Get Jim ready. <laughs> he does. You can make it. I, I really like that title. I re oh. That was my first title. This is my caretaker, by the way. This is, this is Lori Graham. You ever met her? <laughs> well, I'm sure. She's my caretaker. Yes. I love it. I'm honored. Like, I'm, I really am. I'm very honored that God would choose me to, you know, be next to you. And she just cares for me. That's right. And, That's right. and so uh, 
I, I, I had no idea what 80 was going to be. My sister Donna's 86. Just turned 86, and Donna. Look at her. She looks cute. She's cute. She, she, she is. Yeah. But it's been a miracle, but what we've been through has been quite a year. And uh, we're not going to talk about it right now. But no, but what I just say like hi to, to the people, I just honey. Say hello to everybody. And there's, Isn't you know, it good to see you. It is so good. I have so many memories with so many of you and so many your faces. It's just, it, it makes us miss coming and doing the show and seeing you in the studio audience, the faithfuls that are always there. We depend on you and give us energy. Yeah, and some it, of you were here at day one. With us. Oh, absolutely. And um, just to even hear feedback in the monitor is kind of refreshing. I know, it sounds <laughs> I know that sounds strange to you, but, you know, where we do the show, I mean, where there's no feedback in the monitor, you can't hear yourself. You just hope that the audio is going through and you pray that production's got it all together. And they've been doing an amazing job <laughs> producing the show behind the scenes. It's really been amazing. But I, I just want to say thank you to each and every single one of you. You know, when God called me into ministry in 1990, I, I was like, okay, but what do I do with this now? I need to know how, I mean, you called me into ministry. It was, you know, the real thing. And I'm like, so how, but I need training. I need, I need, minist I need to know how to do this thing called ministry. And the Lord had me. For nine and a half years, almost a decade, I volunteered my whole entire life to the church and to the ministry. And little did I ever know that, that one day that God would place me in, a, like, in doing what I'm doing now. But I really believe that you know, faithfulness is a huge thing. And faithfulness honors God, and God honors faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And there's something so powerful about it when you live it out. It, 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 and even this morning, I heard the song, Tiffany played the song for me that Carrie Underwood just sang, you know, great is thy faithfulness. And it's, it is just incredible. And, and all I was dreaming about all night was your faithfulness and thinking about your faithfulness. And God honors that in such a beautiful way. God told Jim when he was in the prison cell, however many years ago now, that, that the way that ministries will make it in the last days is one simple key. It's called volunteerism. And it is very, God takes it very seriously. And, and so do we, you know, and we love you. We love you from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate each and every single one of you. But we hope you all are watching the show and you're getting ministered to by the most amazing guest. And we are, we are gearing up to come back here to the studio. So we don't know the day, the time, but God knows. God knows. And that's the most important. And just be faithful to what God's called you to do. He wants to use you. When you. You know, he really does take people up on it when they say, here I am, God, use me. He's like, okay, I'll take you up on that. He knows your heart. He knows. So it's good, it's good to see you, Pastor Dave. We love you so much. Yes, yes. We yeah, we so do. Much. We love you. So without any further ado, honey, are you good? Mondo's right here. Yeah. He's the catcher. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Through this time of COVID, it, 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 we've survived, and it was a miracle. Not only did we had this COVID, which I prophesied would have come on the, on the New Year's service, and it came, and it's not gone yet, but it could have wiped us out. We kept on going, and I want to thank Marcella and, and the whole team and little Lori, who works by our side all the time. I don't know what I'd do without my children. Don't curse your children. But the miracle is the way you stood together. The miracle is where the volunteers kept working. Do you know we have volunteers that are 
running camera now. They're volunteers that are working television. And, uh, but when you have that spirit, you can do anything. Pastor Joe knows that. You, you're like me. You're so much like me. You're a hillbilly clone of Jim Baker. <laughs> But we've been up in these hills a long time, and you've been up in the hills longer than I have. And I'm proud to be a hillbilly. I love hillbilly. Oh, it's so good to be with you. Can I have fun a little bit here? I'm not supposed to. I know that. But without the volunteers and without what we've been through, we've seen it happen with Marcella. Stand up, Marcella. Marcella's my daughter. You say, this sounds like a family affair. Mondo's our adopted son. His dad is going to be with God. And your dad's been dead a long time now. Ten years has it been? So you adopted me, right? Yes. Papa. Papa. <laughs> and so Mondo and I, we've been together 21, 22, 23 years. And then... Tammy Sue's been with me since the day she <laughs> said, hello, world. <laughs> and yet, the great thing for me is to have my family around me that care enough to stay. People don't stay anymore. People come and go. But I want to find out where God wants me. And I believe there's a group in this room that has found out where God wants you. Yes. And together, we're going to make it. Yes. How many in the 80s club? Anybody? Raise your hand if you're 80 or over. Come on, come on. Don't be a brand. Don't be ashamed. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But it's so exciting to work with 80-year-old people because they they just have a, a ability to want to do things, want to keep working, keep moving, keep being. And I'm supposed to take just a few minutes to talk to you, but I'm taking already in the introduction a few minutes. Psalms 110.3. I wanted to find a scripture. Pastor Joe, have you ever looked up volunteer in the Bible? It's not there. Not in the King James. The King James does not say volunteer. But it says, your people will volunteer freely in the day of your power. In holy array from the womb of the dawn. For your youth are to you as the dew. That's what volunteers, they become young again. They become active. They, they are people that make it happen. And God spoke to me in the last days, and we're there. In the last days, without volunteerism, the church world will not exist. Most people won't work without pay, so volunteers have already volunteered without pay. And God says, I'm going to restore your youth to you as the do. And I feel like I'm 110 years old at times. But God restored me and is restoring me. And I faced the shadow of death. And then one by one, I'd go back on the show. And I still do it day after day. And I've done the shows. I'm getting used to it again. The, gr the network's growing. It's unbelievable. You can have a broken down old man and you have God's blessing. You can do anything with God. Yeah. All things are possible with God. 
Well, I want to, I, I want to just talk to you about one of my favorite people in the Bible, and I don't get to do this much anymore because I don't preach a whole lot anymore, but I got to preach once in a while, and Pastor Joe said I could preach in the future. I got a whole book of the Bible I want to preach on. Can you guess which one? Yeah. I think it's the Ephesians. And I want to, I want to preach again. I love to preach. But the first thing you have to know to do to, to, to preach is you've got to be able to stand up. <laughs> so, so Monty, if I preach, you could sit beside me every day and catch me while I fall. I never knew we'd have catchers for the preachers. <laughs> but you never know. But you're going to get old. We all get old. Either that or we die. Right? And then it was appointed a man wants to die. And I'm facing death. I'm facing death all the time. I faced it for a year. And you, do you ever face death? Do you ever think about it? I haven't started planning my funeral. And I'm not a funeral man. I mean, I just don't, don't want to go to funerals. I, would, I don't even like them. You know. And so, but I think about them. I think about... Should I be cremated? Should I put underground? Should I be in a box? Boy, that's pretty weird. And, and, and so, you know, when you, when you go through the valley of shadow of death, you think about dying. You think about those things. And so I, I'm just sharing it with you because I don't share it with anybody else. I don't have any friends. Well... I mean, that's what, that's what I'm here for, to see if I have any friends. Because <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've been, I've been, what do you call it when you're locked up? I've been in lockdown. Been in lockdown. I've been locked down for a year. Lori and I get so bored sometimes, and I keep telling her, let's go out to eat. She says, we can't go out to eat. Can't go anywhere. <laughs> if I see any more reruns of reruns on TV. <laughs> well, years ago, I preached about a man called Obed Eden. I don't know if you ever heard me preach about Obed Eden, but he was one of my favorite characters in the Old Testament. He was a fanatic. He was a volunteer on steroids. Is that right? Is that how you say it? Steroids? 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 Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the biggest fanatics in the Bible. They say he was a crazy man almost. A comeback after a setback will make you a fanatic. <laughs> when they say you're dead, the doctor told Lori I was, had 50% chance that I would live. She didn't bury me. She, I mean, she didn't think I was going to die, did you, Lori? Or did you? No. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> No. But you didn't plan for me to die. No. She planned for me to live. Yes. But the doctor said you got a 50% chance that Jim's going to go away. <laughs> and Lori just kept on believing. But they separated Lori from me in that last hospital. So I was all alone in the hospital. And I didn't like that. Because I'm used to having my wife with me. We get attached after... 20 some years, and we've been married 23 years now. And uh, <laughs> time goes by fast, doesn't it? So I want you to meet this big fanatic. First Chronicles 
13, verse 1, if you want to go there in your Bible. The Philistines had captured the ark decades, decades the ark had been captured. And David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds with the other, every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, If it seems good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of the Israel, and with them also to the priests and Levites, which are in the cities in the suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us. And let us bring again the ark of our God. That's the presence of God is in that ark. That's the most holy of holy place that they had in Bible days. For we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. Decades the, the ark was away. It was separate. The ark of the covenant. The symbol of the Lord's present. And uh, it, it, it was scary because remember, uh, what was his name? Uz Uzziah? Is that right? Touched the ark and Lord, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzziah. Is that right? Uzzah. And he smote him because he put his hand to the ark and there he died before God. That's how holy the ark was. It seemed the right thing to do, but in Bible days, God said, don't touch it. Don't touch it. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, how shall I bring the ark of God home to me? David was afraid, so he put the ark at obed Eden's house. Would you want the ark at your house? I would, but it's scary. What if your grandchildren all went in there and touched it and all your kids are dead? You know, it, it would be a pretty scary thing to have around. But yet it was the holiest of holies. Verse uh, 13 here it says, So David brought not the ark home to himself to the city of David, but carried it inside, aside, into the house of Obed-Eden, the Gittite, from Gath, a Philistine land. Life as Obed-Eden knew came to a standstill. And Obed-Eden became probably the biggest fanatic in the Bible history. He could have really gotten upset. Life as he knew it will never be the same. First Chronicles 13 says, And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Eden in his house three months, and the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Eden and all that he had. Obed-Eden experienced the presence of God. And that's why he wanted to do everything he could to be near the presence of God. And there's people that are here today, they moved to Morningside to be where there's godly people. And people say, well, I didn't know godly people acted this way. Well, they act all different ways because they're all different people. We're all different people. You're scaring me. I'll be okay. I'm used to walking around when I preach, but... Uh, it, Am I not supposed to walk around? Oh, you can. Once you experience the presence of God and the honor of God and the acceptance of God, you're not going to be satisfied with anything else. Yes. And my last years of prison, the body of Christ was there in the prison. It grew bigger than this, probably. In prison, we had Bible study. We had revival. We had so many people get saved in the last prison that we didn't know what to do because there wasn't room enough for them to go to church on Sunday. So they could only go to church every other Sunday. 
They had to divide up the prisoners from the saved people. <laughs> because so many had gotten saved. Because we had the presence of God in prison. That's how I studied and learned the book of Revelation. What do you think this Revelation is all about? We preach it all the time. But that comes out of the prison years. And it was the presence of God that came into my prison. I'll tell you, after you've been in prison, being locked up with my wife's not so bad. <laughs> I mean, your prison could be anything you make it. You know what I mean? <coughs> you better appreciate each other. I know I shouldn't tell this story because it's an old, old story. I've told it in my sermons years ago. But it's a, this a pr pr pastor was sitting down at the dining room table with this lady whose husband had just passed away. And they were sitting there at the dining room table, and she looked up at the china there in her china ca ca cabinet. And she went and picked out some of the beautiful pieces of china. She said, I never used this. She said, I never used our good china. I kept saving it for a special guest, for somebody special. And she says, I realize my husband was that special guest. And I should have brought the china out for him. That story just touched me. I don't know why I've remembered it. I've, <laughs> I keep saying it again and again and again. But don't miss those moments. Volunteers are special. The scripture I read earlier from the Psalms 110, this, this scripture is so uh, powerful. Your people will volunteer freely on the day of your power. You can be, choose to be a part of the body of Christ. If we don't get the church together and love one another, we're not going to sur survive what's coming. It's coming together is what's going to save us. Amen? Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. Why do you recommend the Signal Relief Patch? Because I think that we are just barely scratching the surface um, in Western medicine right now. Over the last hundred years, we have become medical interventionalists. Um, we continue to look for slightly different changes in the way that we do things. To be able to be involved with a company that literally has thought outside the box. I'm able to be part of a transformative technology that can you know, alleviate discomfort in a lot of ways. So in between these two layers of material, you have about a billion nanocapacitors that have been built to work with the energy field of your body. And uh, with this patch, we basically can intercept irregularities in the body and in the energy field and pull them out, which uh, instantly decreases discomfort. It's guaranteed you got 120 days to try it. Mm -hmm. That's right. If it doesn't yes. work, just That's get right. your money back. It's like, what do you have yeah. to lose when people live in such discomfort? I don't know if you ever have, but if you haven't, yeah. I pray you never have to. But if you do, let me just say it, it, it can be, you know, uh, debilitating mm -hmm. it, all, when you're having to lay down because you're in such discomfort and mm -hmm. So hurting. you can try one of the signal relief patches last two years. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. 
If you haven't already, or maybe you have, maybe you already have received yours, you can order another one today, but order it one signal relief patch offer for a donation of $155 to the ministry. That does include the shipping and handling. Remember, this is a cost effective product, fast acting, 100% drug free, and it's reusable for up to two years. That's one signal relief patch for a $155 donation to the ministry or better yet the two pack which is two patches two signal relief patches for a donation of $295 to the ministry and that does include the shipping and handling in that offer so what you receive in in this offer and I don't know if we explain it exactly to you is you receive one patch you know if you order one one patch three adhesives and one case. It's cost effective, it's fast acting. Yes. That's why we have the testimonies already. So call us at 1 888 988 1588 or go to the website, jimbakershow.com. I strongly recommend getting the two yes. if you can, because like yes. Lisa, like me, like anybody else, once you use it, then what's going to happen is you're going to want to. You give it to your loved ones, the ones you love, the ones you cherish. So call us right now and order and get your signal relief ASAP and try it. So Ovid even does everything to be where the presence of God is. He does everything and you talk about a volunteer, Oban Eden joins everything. <laughs> we don't have a choir, do we, a big choir? We, yeah. Maybe we need to have a choir because Oban Eden joined the choir. <laughs> he did. He did. First Chronicles 15, 16. And David spake the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to the singers with instruments of music, psaltery, harps, cymbals, sounding of singers and instruments of music, psaltery and harps and cymbals, sound by lifting up the voices with joy. So the Levites appointed Hermon, the son of Joel, and the brethren Asaph, the son of Berechala, and the sons of Moriah, their brethren, Ethan, the son of Kishma. Obed Eden becomes a member of the choir. And then he becomes a porter. Do you know what a porter is? To be near the ark. A porter in the Greek is a janitor, actually. But a doorkeeper, a porter. He said, I'd rather be a janitor and be near where God is. Amen. So Oban even does everything. It, it says here he plays the harp. It says, so the singers, Herman, Asaph, and Ethan were pointed to be sung with cymbals and brass. And it goes on here, it says, and Oban Eden and Jeriel and all the others played with the harps and sang lyrics, it says. So Oban Eden he joins the choir, he joins the orchestra, he joins the janitor's department, he joins the porters, he joins the, all the different parts. He became, starts playing the harp, and then he's an Oban Eden is a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. First Chronicles 15.4. Oban Eden and Jehiah were doorkeepers for the ark. But he joins everything. He's a volunteer. Why? Because he wants to be with the people of God. He wants to be where God's presence is. And this is what volunteers, the reason they do it, they volunteer is under the Lord. The satisfaction to go to sleep at night, to know that you've done things for the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what we need to do in the last days. The only way you're going to be happy is if you're doing something. I'll tell you, the worst thing is to do is to lay home in bed and not be able to do anything. I want to be able to get out and do things and want to make sermons <laughs> for the Lord and all. So Obedin joined the choir to be near the ark. 
he joined as a porter to be near the ark. He played the harp. Obed-Eden is a doorkeeper for the ark. Then he joins the worship team. And then in 1 Chronicles 16.5, we find him with the harps and psalteries and other instruments. We find him with a bunch of guys in a church orchestra. He just would join anything to be in the house of the Lord, to be in the presence of God. So he left before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and his brethren to minister before the ark continually as every day's work required. And Obed-Eden with their brethren, three score and eight, Obed-Eden also the son of Judith, Judiah and Hosea to be a porter. But Obed-Eden was then ministering continually before the ark of the covenant. So Oban even gets his eight sons involved next as the story goes on and I'm through. But Oban Eden not was just satisfied with being near the Lord himself. He wanted to bring his children and his grandchildren. And so he brought them all in. Jesus is coming soon. I really want to be where he wants me to be. I want to do what he wants me to do. So Oban Eden had a life-changing event. He moved into a life-changing place like me. And the church is God's safe haven in the last days. I believe in volunteers. I believe that God has spoken to me that it's the only way the church is going to survive. And some of you are already working on being camera people, being... You could direct, you could do technical things. And together, we're going around the world. You say, oh, I want to do a missionary job. We have a potential audience of 1,600,000,000 viewers on the Jim Baker Show. Bunch of us up in the hills. Reaching that many people in the world is insane. But God does miracles. With God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen. And together, we can see miracles happen. The Bible says not to become weary and well-doing. Oh, I get so weary. Any weary, weary people here <laughs> get weary sometimes? You're just all full of spizzerinkdom. <laughs> That's an old Bible word <laughs> used to use in the church. I pray every day for energy. The strokes left me weak, but the Bible says I'm strong in Him. When I'm weak, I'm strong in Christ. Yeah. And but I'll tell you, I believe in a God bigger than me. A God bigger than anything. And following Him, we can do all things. The key is people. More than money. We're always out of money. <laughs> but God keeps supplying it in spite of things. It can't be done, but it's, it's happening. Isn't that right, Marcella? I'm going to say goodbye. I thank you for welcoming me back. Marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent. 
No more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labor in the courtroom. No debate. Work on earth is all suspended as the king comes through. Well, I just heard the trumpet sounding. Oh, and now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. He's coming. Happy faces line the hallways. Those whose lives have been redeemed. Broken homes that he has mended. Those from prison he has freed. Little children and the aged hand in hand. Those were crippled, broken, ruined, clad in garments white as snow. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. Well, I just heard the trumpet sounding. Jesus, hallelujah. Deborah, could you come up here a minute? I want us to pray for Deborah. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, God bless you. Deborah is the head of volunteers for our ministry. And she's the Thank you, leader of the troops, so we want her to be blessed and anointed. Yes. Pastor Joe, come lay hands on her, would you? Well, Father, I thank you for the anointing in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, we believe in the power of God. We know that we hear from you, and God, that you caused everything to happen for all the things you are doing, Lord, right now. You do good. And Father, we ask, Lord, for anointing upon Deborah from the top of her head to the soles of her feet as she hears from you, and she walks in the way that you caused her to walk in Jesus' name. Cause her burdens to be light. You said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, and we lift it to you, and we cast all our cares upon you. 
you because you care for us. And Father, we put that over on the people today. Lord, that they walk in a love and in a lightness and the joy of the Lord be their strength as they serve in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I love you for it, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you.